Hi guys. So today we are going to go back to the poem that we were working with on Monday, Life Doesn't Th Frighten Me. And we are going to dig a little deeper into it and we are going to write a quick summary and then you are going to write a theme statement and find some synonyms for some words. Okay, so before we get started on today's, I'm gonna go over Monday's Google form. And I have some of your responses written down on a piece of paper, so I'm just going to share them as we do it. So the first question was, did the poet give plenty of examples of everyday life fears? Explain. So most of you guys said yes, and then you guys gave me a list, snakes, dark shadows, lions, dragons. I agree. I think that the author did give plenty of examples of everyday fears. Okay, our second question right here, Sorry about that. I don't want to edit it. Our second question is, did the poet give examples of how to relieve those fears? Explain. So how to relieve means how to get rid of the fears. Okay. Um, I got a mixed bunch of answers on that. Some of you guys said absolutely not at all. Some of you said yes. Um, so the ones that said yes, the examples that were given were go boo, make them shoo, smile, and magic charm up my sleeve. So I thought those were pretty interesting examples. Our third question is, what could the poet have added to show how to relieve fears? I got some really good answers and it's interesting because most of you gave me the same responses. Um, I got deep breathing, close your eyes and focus on happy things, watch videos or some other kind of a distraction, um, say, I will not let that fear control me. And another one that I really liked was imagine you're at the beach or somewhere fun. So I really liked those answers. Okay. The last question that you guys had was, do you disagree with any of the choices the poet made to relieve the fears? I got some really good answers on this one too. Um, one of the ones that I found very interesting was saying boo might actually scare you instead of help you. Um, and then someone else said that I make fun. That's really not a nice thing to do. And that's kind of, you know, two negatives don't make a positive. So I found those really interesting. Thank you guys for answering these questions for me. Okay. So before we actually get into reading the poem again, I want to look at the text or at the structure of the poem. So as we read it on Monday, we noticed that stanza one, two, three, and four, all four of these stanzas, they describe possible fears. Bad dogs barking, big ghosts in clouds, shadows on the wall, noises down the hall, mean old mother goose, lions on the loose, dragons breathing flames on my bedspread. Okay, so all of those are possible fears, right? Um, and then we said that right here, stanza five is different than the other stanzas because stanza five gives us actions on how maybe we can make the um, fears go away. And then stanzas six through nine, these are more possible fears. Um, tough guys fight all alone at night. Panthers in the dark, or sorry, panthers in the park, strangers in the dark. That new classroom where boys Pull, I'll pull my hair. Kissy little girls with their hair in curls. Okay, again, possible fears. And then we go to stanza 10. In stanza 10, this shows us that maybe she might only be afraid in her dreams. And then stanza 11 demonstrates how she reacts to the fears. She has a magic charm up her sleeve. Um, she's walking on the ocean floor and she never has to breathe. Then we have stanzas 12 and 13 and stanzas 12 and 13. Those are just the repetition, the I'm not scared. She's trying to really show us that life doesn't frighten her. 
Okay, so that's how the poem is set up. So now let's talk about, actually, I'm going to read it through one more time. And then we're going to talk about a couple of things. Go back to the top. Shadows on the wall, noises down the hall. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Bad dogs barking loud, big ghost in a cloud. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Mean old mother goose, lions on the loose. They don't frighten me at all. Dragons breathing flame on my counter pain. That doesn't frighten me at all. I go boo, make them shoo. I make fun, way they run. I won't cry, so they fly. I just smile, they go wild. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Tough guys fight, all alone at night. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Panthers in the park, strangers in the dark. No, they don't frighten me at all. That new classroom where boys all pull my hair. Kissy little girls with their hair in curls. They don't frighten me at all. Don't show me frogs and snakes and listen for my scream. If I'm afraid at all, it's only in my dreams. I've got a magic charm that I keep up my sleeve. I can walk the ocean floor and never have to breathe. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Not at all. Not at all. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Okay, so as I'm reading through it, I notice that there, a lot of the animals were mentioned. Let's get through and look at the animals that were mentioned. Um, right here, I see bad dogs. It doesn't just say dogs, it says bad dogs. And I know that bad is an adjective and this adjective is describing the noun dogs. Typically, whenever I think of dogs, I don't think of bad dogs. Um, more animals, lions. Now lions, whenever I think of a lion, yeah, I'm pretty frightened. Dragons, even though that's not technically an animal, it's more of a mythical creature, but dragons. Then we have panthers. Panthers are frightening to me, kind of like the lions. Any kind of big cat is frightening to me. Then we have frogs and snakes. I don't want to touch a frog, but I'm not necessarily scared of them. Snakes, um, keep them away. And that looks like all of the animals. Why do you think that the poet referred to animals? And these specific animals, what do you think? Think about that for a sec. Were these animals scary animals? snakes, panthers, lions, and the ones that we don't typically think of as scary, like the dog, she put an adjective in front of it to make it scary. Bad dogs. And not only are they bad dogs, but they're barking loud. Um, what do all of these adjectives have in common? Which I kind of already said that. Um, bad, big, mean. They're trying to show the scary side of these creatures or these people. Okay, so let's look at stanza 11. And stanza 11 says, I've got a magic charm that I keep up my sleeve. I can walk the ocean floor and never have to breathe. Okay, so what do you think that I got, I got a magic charm that I keep up my sleeve most nearly means? Right here. I've got a magic charm that I keep up my sleeve. What do you think that is? Whenever I read this, I see all of the fears, all of the fears, and then... I see this and it makes me think that this is a strategy that the poet has to overcome these fears. What do you guys think? Maybe? Okay. So 
So the poet's word choice about frightening things. I'm going to go back up here to mean old mother goose. It might not have said old. Oh, it did. Okay. So mean old mother goose. So typically whenever I think of mother goose, I think of the fun things like Jack and Jill. Humpty Dumpty is a little sad, but mother goose, I don't think of her as mean. And so for her to add that adjective right there, mean, makes me think that she's wanting to show us the scary part, the frightening side of it. Um, are kids and people scared of the same things? Sometimes, but most of the time kids are more scared or are scared of more things than adults. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. So before we get to writing a theme statement, we are going to summarize this. And then we're going to pull some of the words from the summary. Um, we are going to use a summary called Get the Gist. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Only I don't have it up. Let's see. If, oh, yes, I do right there. Let me see if I can open this with read word. Read right so that I can type on it. Okay, so get the gist is you are going to write a summary and you are not allowed to use more than 10 words. That's not a lot. So 10 words. I'm going to go back to this poem and I am going to, I see frighten a lot. So I'm going to have to use some synonym of frighten. It might be scared or fear or something like that, but I feel like I'm going to need some synonym of frighten in this. Um, and then I need to think, what is the author trying to tell me? What is the walk away message that this author is trying to tell me? So, what I want you to do is I want you to grab a sheet of paper and I want you to pause it right here. And I want you to try to write a 10 word or less. It doesn't, you don't have to use all 10 spaces, but each one of these lines represents one word, a 10 word or less summary of the poem, Life Doesn't Frighten Me. Okay, pause right now and I'll meet you back in a couple of minutes. Okay, I hope that you really paused and I hope that you really wrote something. So I have been sitting here thinking as you were writing. And so I'm going to go back to this poem again and I'm going to kind of look at the structure again. I see that this right here, whoops, these are talking about fears. Actually, stanzas one through four are talking about fears. Stanza five is showing how maybe strategies that you could use to overcome fears. Then stanza six through nine are more fears. Stanza 10 says maybe it's only in my dream. Stanza 11 is showing another way to overcome these fears. And then 12 and 13 are just the definitive life doesn't frighten me at all. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my Get the Gist page, and I am going to write a summary. And I am thinking um, that the author is trying to show us that we can, we can use different strategies to overcome our fears. So I'm going to put, whoops, I'm going to put you... I'm going to add another text box right here. Can, right there, so really, where I really want it is right there. It's not going to let me. You can, there is Benson, use, um, whoops, strategies to, overcome 
your oops. ears. Okay, so I used eight words here. So you can use strategies to overcome your fears. That's what I feel like the gist of this is. So if I am looking for a thematic idea, I can pull words from right here. So if I were to just pull the important words that might help me point towards the theme, I'm going to put down here, um, thematic ideas, because these are possible thematic ideas. I think a big one is fear. So I'm going to put fear right here. And I think another big one is overcoming fears, because I think that that is what the author is trying to show us, that there are ways to overcome our fears. So in my opinion, I believe that the thematic ideas of this poem are fear or overcoming fears. So what you are going to do today is you are going to write a theme statement and your theme statement if you totally disagree with these you can write something different but this is pointing you in a direction that i feel is correct if you want to use that um so your theme statement is going to tell us what you think the author is trying to show us the message now don't forget a theme statement it has to be universal it is not specific so you are not going to mention snakes or dragons or anything that was mentioned in our poem. You can't mention those. You have to mention, you have to just be general and not specific. So it has to fit several different circumstances. Okay. Um, let me show you where that is. So you have a Google form to fill out. And right here is where you are going to write your theme statement. Again, I gave you two thematic ideas that you can go with. You can totally ignore those if you do not like them, but you could go along the line of fear or you could go along the line of overcoming fears or you could totally take your own. And so you're gonna write your theme statement right there. It needs to be universal. And then we're gonna do some synonyms. So I want you to find Benson, be quiet. Sorry about that. I want you to find some synonyms for frighten. So when I say some synonyms, I'm thinking at least three. Okay. Three is a good number for some. So some synonyms for frighten. We've already talked about a few of them, actually. You're going to give me some synonyms for choices. Again, a good number is three. You're going to give me some synonyms for aspiration. And you're going to give me some synonyms, or no, sorry, no synonyms. You're going to tell me what does it mean to be reflective? Think about that. What does it mean to be reflective? Okay. And that is it for today. Bye, guys.